they say, because words are all, it's just talk. I want to see people walk the walk. Talking the talk is easy, it's cheap, and it can be very deceptive. Welcome to Timelines, Meet the Voter, episode 295. Today we have Andrew Cogdell, who is a university assistant athletic director for football academic services. As you will find out, we need more people in our community like Andrew to step up and run for office. Washoe County's future is bright with leaders like Andrew. Now, without further ado, let's get right into this episode. Welcome to Timelines, Meet the Voter, sponsored by the RMC. Hey, we're trying something a little different today. We're out in Lemon Valley at the Hometown Cafe, which is absolutely amazing place. And uh, I ate here yesterday, and it's like out of the past. It's like out of the 50s. We have Andrew Cargill. He is running for Washoe County School Board. Yes, sir. And we're going to first talk about a lot of things. We've got a lot of things to do, Andrew, to knock through this, because sir? you're the S- at Assistant Athletics Director um, in Academics for the students at UNR and primarily football and tennis. We're going to talk about that and how you got there. We're going to, t- and that's the main part and what you think about Reno. We're going to, then we're going to talk about life and success principles and a little bit about your campaign and that'll be it as we tie everything together. Make sure I start my little clock here and we're good to go. So Andrew, welcome to Timelines. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. And you're working hard. You've been running for uh, school board here for a while. You're 31 yeah. years old. Yeah. Yes, sir. You're a transplant. Live here about four and a half years. Yep. But you yep. love it here, like love everyone it here. else. I love it, Re- love it here in Reno. And you live out in Lemon Valley area, which is just sort of on the outskirts of Reno to the north, mm-hmm. the north, northeast, I'd say. And it's a little deserty out here, beautiful mountains and hills. There's a neat park out here, too, I know. And uh, Lemon Valley is a unique place in itself. We could talk about that. But let's talk about you. Yeah. So how did you end up here in Reno and, and becoming an athletic director in academics? At UNR, which it's a beautiful campus, of course. Yeah, so I, when I got my master's degree in sports management, I interned at Northern Illinois University for academics and the football team. I then I got a job at Lamar University doing the same thing, and I wanted to move up and came to Reno and fell in love with the city. Moved out here in 2014, been out here ever since. I love the university, I love the community, I love working with my students. And uh, it's, it's a job that's rewarding each and every day to see them succeed, many of whom are, not, are stereotyped against that they're maybe not going to be the best students on campus, but yet we continue to outperform the general student body in our academic performance. Right. You know, if it's more of the story, before you came here four and a half years ago, how was UNR rated? Yeah, so overall the NCAA had us ranked tied for third to last in the nation. And 160 or so teams? Yeah, 127 back wow. then, and we were tied for 122nd in our academic yeah. performance for just the football program. And this last year, we came in at eighth out of 131. That really says a lot. You know, UNR, I love UNR. It's an amazing mm-hmm. school. It's a beautiful school in the hill, old tradition, one of the top 100 schools in the country. And it's really a self made school, and it's the first school in Nevada. Yes, it is our flagship institution despite what some people in Las Vegas would like you to believe. <laughs> it, it, this is the, the University of Nevada. I know, they still call Rebels down there. I don't yep, they're the Rebels. Yep. Yeah, there was some controversy a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah. But, uh, and you're up to the north, and the um, UNR, anyway, it's a beautiful campus. Uh, we can talk left and right about Reno. So what's your day like uh, towards uh, being assistant athletic director with the academic side? What do you do every day? So when I get to work, I prepare for the day. The football program practices in the morning, which is nice. I'm able to come in, get ready for them, because around noon, 1 o'clock, I start seeing them, and I'll, I'll be in communication with them all day till about 11 p.m., midnight, every day, ensuring they're getting their work done, making sure they have what they need, making sure they're, they're okay. I do wellness checks, just overall well-being of the student. So it's, it's, a, it's not an 8-to-5 job. It's... All day, every day, I, and that's, that's how I want it, because I, I value their time here, and I value them as, as young men. Very good. Now, this weekend, you're doing something kind of neat. What are you doing? It's yeah, we're, we're going to Air Force this weekend for a travel with the football team, ensure they're keeping up with their schoolwork when we're on the road, being an assistance to them. And going out to Air Force is always cool, see the service academy, 
I've been there once. Last time I was there, it was zero degrees. <laughs> it's supposed to be about 80 this weekend, so it'll be a little bit nicer, a little more, more comfortable, but should be a should be a great game. The Falcons, you know, the academy schools are always underrated. They're tough, tough teams. Mm -hmm. Yes. Air Force runs a triple option, so that's always tough to prepare for, but... You know, the guys have been working hard this week, and we're going to go out Saturday and go to work. I'll look forward to that. We'll see how it ends up. Yeah. So uh, driving on with your time, um, what was the biggest change you saw from you, your home was, was Wisconsin? Yes. So coming from Wisconsin to Nevada, what's the biggest change? I would say weather. Uh, I'm not a big fan of humidity. <laughs> I'm also not a big fan of the extreme winters, so I pretty much wasn't a big fan of much of the weather in Wisconsin. So coming out here, happy to... Be in a more temperate climate, more consistent, love the sun. Uh, Reno is just such a beautiful town that a lot of people in the Midwest, East Coast don't know about. I'm not sure the people of Reno want them to find out about it because we, we like our small town feel, but I, I truly love it here. This is, this is my home. It's a big change from Wisconsin. I big know that. change. I used to fly out of Volk Field in Special Operations, mm -hmm. and uh, Green Bay is a small town. Yes. How, how, where do you live close to Green Bay? Uh, I'm quite a ways from Green Bay. I grew up near Milwaukee okay. in the Racine area, southeast corner, close to the Illinois border. You ever go to a Green Bay game? Uh, I have not been to a game officially. I am a stockholder, <laughs> so I do have it's, stock so I in the Green that. Bay Packers. No, yeah. own, you know, own, I like how they own have people who own yeah. the team. It's pretty amazing. It's a small yeah. town to have a team of that caliber. Mm -hmm. So very good. So going out, we're in. Uh, tell us a little bit about our. Uh, the area and the schools and as we go as we go into a break here but tell us more about how Washoe County schools are organized yeah so we have five standard districts in the board we have two at-large districts so what we're what we're trying to do here is win a standard district C which is everything in the north North Valley Spanish Springs Wadsworth Gerlach it's a very large area so we're we're trying to win this race, and it's a lot of great people and um, great, great teachers, great principals, and very diverse communities out here. It is. It's uh, really the working a lot of working class people out here in North Valley. As they commute into either Reno or now into the um, Tahoe Reno Industrial Complex, which is over the hill. Here. Yeah, I maybe mean, we'll make some better roads going over there. Yeah. Um, Tesla, Switch, uh, Apple, all the big companies are in those areas. Mm -hmm. They take a lot of power. A lot yeah. of energy, yeah. things like that. So uh, going on, um, what are some of the things that you've learned so far on the campaign being out and talking to people? Yeah, that people are frustrated. People want change. People are tired of seeing the school district and the school board in the news. They're tired of surprises coming with what's going on with their kids. They're tired of money being spent where it shouldn't be. They're tired of having an administration that doesn't necessarily care what the public thinks. They're tired of seeing a school board just gets up there and smiles and does their thing regardless of what the people say. It's a people's school district. It belongs to them. That's why it's called the public school district. So Now, I, now in Reno, we've got five, six or seven high schools. Five, I don't know. There's quite a few high schools. Quite a few high schools, yeah. Uh, my kids go to Reno, but up here in North Valley, you've got Spanish Springs, yeah, which is a pretty Good area, a pretty interesting area, bigger homes, mm -hmm. golf courses, a lot of expansion, and you've got North Valley, right? Yeah, we have two high schools in District C. And they are called Title I. Is that correct, Title I? Yeah, many of the elementary schools are, are Title I up in the north. North, but not the, the high schools aren't? Or, mm -hmm. Okay. So Title I means that they get federal funding because there's not enough money in those districts? or what's... Yeah, yeah. There's extra federal funds that come into, to come into those schools. So that's very important that we, we get that money. It just, it just helps, it helps service these children. Okay, good, good. So going on, we're going to take a quick break, and we're coming back in Life and Success Principles. I want to go into the campaign a little more and what's going on with the campaign, some of your visions. Absolutely. Quick thanks to our silver sponsors for helping us be able to get out these episodes on timelines. Also for the members. And here's a quick uh, pitch for the RMC. If you like what you hear here and the shows that we present on Timelines, go ahead and join the RMC. It's $35 a year and $20 for associate memberships. Great luncheons and helps us get out these episodes of Timelines. So without further ado, let's get right back into this episode. So we're coming back after the break and we're with Andrew Cogdell here and we're going to talk about your life and success principles. So you gave me three, sort of three and a half or four. 
and their lead by example, honesty, vision with work ethic. So what does lead by example mean to you? Do what the people expect you to do. Um, if, if, you're, if you're expecting people underneath you, let's say you're in a leadership role, to come into work on time, but as supervisor, you're always late, you're going to lose respect, your, your people aren't going to follow you because they're not going to, they're going to look at you and say, you don't even believe what you're saying. What, what I tell students all the time is people will see what you do before they hear what you say. And if you want them to hear what you say, you need to show them what you're, what you're doing. And I, I think that's important for our school district, our school board. Um, we're, we're asking teachers to spend more of their own money to buy supplies because the school district doesn't have the money but yet the administrators are getting cars paid for by tax dollars. The same administrators are telling the schools you need to just make it work. That's not leading by example. If, if there is no money for the schools, the administration should be cutting all their perks. That's how you lead by example. Right, until the kids are up to the very top and the teachers are taking care Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. Very good. So the second point is honesty. Honesty. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems basic, but sometimes it's not. The, this, for me and our school district and just my general way of life, you need to tell people the truth. Even if it's not the most popular thing to say, tell them the truth. Tell them what you believe. If I'm not honest with what my beliefs are in this campaign, I'm lying to the public. I'm, I'm, I'm giving a misperception of who I am. So I tell people, you may not agree with what I think or what I say, but I will always be honest with you. I'm never going to mislead you down a path just to gain a vote. And that's how I'm going to act on the school board. Complete honesty of what's going on. Very good. And vision with work ethic. If you don't know where you're going, it's hard to get there. And when I, when I first came here and I saw our academic performance being so bad in our UNR football program, I decided we have to get better. But you can't just say that and just have it happen out of thin air, out of magic. you got to decide how, where are we going. How are we going to get there? And once you have that, you've got to put in the work to get there. Too many people, too many leaders will have vision. They will tell everyone how we're going to get there. But when it comes to put the work in, they're nowhere to be found. They just want to be in the, in the, behind the scenes telling people what to do. And that's not okay. You need to lead. There's a, there's a picture in my office that I love. It's a, a leadership picture, and it's got two types of leaders. You have one that's sitting on like a carriage with a whip, whipping the people pulling that carriage. And the other one is the leader is in the front of those people, helping them pull the carriage. What, what type of leader do you want to be? And I think we're lacking leadership in our school district. Now, going back to UNR, because that's me, is also very interesting. Mm -hmm. When you're there, you're around athletes. Is there a different kind of motivation yeah, in athletes? Yeah. Like what motivates an athlete to win a game? Is that same athlete motivated also to win an academic? Yeah, not, not always. Sometimes they, you have to figure out what makes each student, t what each student tick. And they're all, they're all different. Some students are going to have that motivation to do well in school because that's how they were raised. Others maybe came up in really poor homes, really difficult situations. And maybe they didn't have that, that drive. And at, football is how they got into college. Football is what got them here. So I need to help push them in a different way. And, and sometimes they're motivated by ath athletics. And, and if they're not doing well in school, not taking a person to school, athletics will cease to exist. It'll come to an end or our eligibility benchmarks they have to meet per university and per the NCAA. So every student's different. I push them all differently. And, uh, and that takes work to get to know each and every one of them different. They're not all the same. Yeah, everyone's different. Mm -hmm. So I. I always believe that education breaks the cycle of poverty, mm -hmm. and maybe football breaks the cycle of poverty for some of these athlete, student athletes. Yeah, they, the goal is graduation, and graduation, that journey is not a sprint. It's also not a straight line. There's peaks, there's valleys, there's winding roads, there's difficulties. It's a marathon, and what I tell them is that I will be with you every step of the way, 
that we go through this journey together. And since I've been here, I've only had one student not graduate. Oh, Every single one of them have left university with a degree, no matter where they've come from, no matter what people say about them, no matter what is perceived about their abilities, they have all walked out of here with a degree except for one, and I'm confident he'll come back. Is there, are there any studies or correlations on winning football teams and academics? You know, to see that. that would be interesting. There, there are some. Um, what I would say is that the really good programs that are consistent winners generally don't have academic problems because they are kind of in that mode. They are uh, established as a program and just because you're aware of me you're good in school but I truly believe that you can do both I push them to do both be great in everything that you do do not pick and choose because that's a that's not going to be good in life and you want to strive to be your best each and every day and sign your name to the day if you're unwilling to sign your name to the day you have really failed in the day that's my perception of it very good so there's one thing. Who do you look up to for leadership? Yeah, so, so I really rely on my faith, my faith in Christ. And uh, I, I turn to my, my pastors, my friends, my family. Um, I like to know the people that I look up to on a very intimate level. I'm not a big, I'm latching on to someone's leadership principles because I read it in a book one day. I don't know anything about them. I don't even know if they live by their own principles. Uh, like I said, I like to see action. I'm a big believer in seeing how someone acts before I hear what they say. Because words are all, it's just talk. I want to see people walk the walk. Talking the talk is easy, it's cheap, and it can be very deceptive. And that goes back to your first point, lead by example. Yeah. Well, very good. You know, we're going to have a nice breakfast here. Um, I'm excited. And I'm looking around this room, and this like, is like, like old-time Nevada yeah. it's in this room. It's crazy, North Valley. I haven't spent that much time up in North Valley, sir, in Lemon Valley specifically. But this is like old time Nevada here. Look out, folks! I'll show you a picture as we go. Yeah, I, I specifically live not too far from here, uh, right into Stead. Uh, North Valley's is very unique. Uh, a lot of times, the community feels like they're the forgotten people of Reno. That's where they want to build all the homes. That's where they want to just kind of pack everyone without a without regard for the community up here and we see it with schools our schools are overcrowded uh, we need help up here with our schools we need more schools up here we're all paying WC1 and North Valleys but it doesn't seem like the school board's all that interested in putting more schools up here we have one high school it's overflowing Cold Springs is a long ways from here and they're the ones that they have to come to this high school down in, in Golden Valley we need more schools here we're paying the taxes for them we need to spread the wealth a little bit and take care of North Valley's. Hey, little history. Stead was out here, which is an Air Force base, World War II, very big Air Force base active. That's probably the only thing out here. Mm -hmm. And farmers and ag folks. Uh, a lot of changing grazing. quick. And they come in from California, which is really close, just over the border here to the north. Mm -hmm. uh, Feather River is just up to north of here, which is actually a good fishing river, but it's in California mostly. So, Yeah, and they're coming over here. They want to build the homes here. and. And we got we got to hold on to our our culture out here, and no, it's definitely a culture. It's an old culture. It's a Nevada culture. Yeah, we we can't lose that out in North Valleys, and it's important to me. That's why I live out here. Yeah, it's neat. It's a neat. It's old time Nevada. It really is, and you can see it right here in this restaurant. By the way, Yelp, uh, we'll, we'll have to show the food. We'll check it out. Yeah, you eat here all the time, right? Yeah, I eat here quite often. It's my favorite place to come, and. It's local for me, and I don't want to drive in the town every time I want to go somewhere. And so this is a tremendous place. Great service, great people. I, I highly recommend it. Okay, Andrew, tell me how the campaign's going. Campaign's going well. Talking to a lot of people, trying to reach as many people as I can. Challenging an incumbent, an incumbent that I feel like hasn't represented the, the views and the values of the northern part of the county. And uh, we got return control of the school district back in the hands of the people. It's the public school district. It's their kids. It's their money. And we are elected. We cannot forget that. I, my first loyalty is to the people of the, my district that have elected me. That, that is what we should be thinking on the school board. We're not one little club. We're not exclusive. We're not the superintendent's best friend. 
we are accountable to the people and we need to start acting that way. Very good. Now, so how, if someone wants to help your campaign, how can they reach you? Yeah, so you can go to my website, Caudill for Nevada, uh, or if you just search my name, Andrew Caudill, you'll see my website. Uh, you can contact me directly. I'm going to be very accessible. My personal cell phone number is available, my email. What's your cell phone number? My cell phone number is 775-636-3985. Feel free to text me, call me. Uh, I want to be accessible not just on the campaign trail, but when, when I get this thing done this year, and, I want to be accessible. And folks, that is his only cell phone that I know of, and you yeah, answer it. I answer if he it. doesn't answer it, leave a voicemail and you'll get back to him. That, that's, your, that's your number. That's my number. And work on. That, that is what I live off of. That's when good. I, You're very accessible. Absolutely. That's, and that's what I want to be when elected. I want the people of my district to know that if they have a problem in their schools, they can call me, and I'm going to help them. Because, again, we need to do better for our kids. We need to do better for our economy and our community. And the best way to do it is to hold your elected officials accountable. And... Accountability for me is being accessible so that you know what I'm thinking. Very good. Very good. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi, this is Bill, and thank you for listening to this episode of Timelines. If you could go right here and subscribe on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, of course, and watch a few more movies over here. And if you're listening to it on iTunes, go ahead and subscribe. Appreciate it very much, rating and review. Till next time, take care, and always make it a great day.